Hi, I'm Christy Whitman, author of The Art of Having It All, and you are watching The Quantum Success Show, where you can get your information and inspiration to create your desires. In this episode, we're going to explore how you can have your it and your all. Discovering our it and our all is a deeply personal mission that each one of us undertakes for ourselves. You know, no two people have the same life experiences, the same perspectives, or even the same goals or preferences, same beliefs or ideals. And for this reason, no two people define having it all in exactly the same way. Each and every one of us is a unique expression of the divine. And despite what we may have been socialized to believe, we don't all want the same things. Let me say that again because it's really important. We don't all want the same things. I know many people who thrive on devoting a lion's share of their time and attention to their careers. For them, work is a primary source of empowerment, self-esteem, and the fulfillment that they really derive from this area spills over into all others. Some people are wired the exact opposite and having it all for them is really centered around building a happy marriage and family. And I know women for whom friendships with other girlfriends are a major source of fulfillment and others who get those special needs met through work or you know, political activism and other outlets like that. There are a growing number of women and men who are consciously deciding not even to have children and to channel their energy instead into building a different type of community or into a life of philanthropy and service. And as a matter of fact, the cover of the 2013 issue of Time Magazine features the headline, when having it all means not having kids. You know, my best friend Dawn, who I've known since seventh grade, is a perfect example. As long as I have known her, Dawn has been completely clear that marriage and children were not part of her equation for having it all. Acknowledging that that was her decision and was a conscious decision made totally by her own design, she then successfully attracted a partner who shares those values. Although they have never been married and they have never had children, they have been creating a beautiful and happy life together for over 21 years. So having it all is having everything we desire in each aspect of our own self-expression and in the proportion that is perfect for each one of us. One's personal idea of balance will be another woman's nightmare. So because each one of us come into this world with a unique set of circumstances and challenges and opportunities and desires, there are literally as many different definitions of having it all as there are people on the planet. So even for the same person, our ideas about what we want out of life really change and evolve as we do from year to year, day to day, and from moment to moment. You know, when I was single, a central component of creating my it and my all was finding my ideal partner. And once I magnetized Frederick into my life, I'll tell you that story in another episode. <laughs> um, I'll go deeper in it also into the art of having it all. but. I wanted to create a home with him. And then after we got the marriage and we moved into our ideal house, we then wanted to have a child. And then on and on it goes, right? We never get it done. We never get it all done because the moment we create something new, that new vantage point brings our awareness to a new desire to create something different or more. Life is a process of defining and redefining what we want. And as a result, our desires are continually under revision. There's no final destination. Once we reach the top, and maybe the top of the mountain, we're now in the process of climbing because nothing more than a, this is more of a vista from which we can then see the next mountain. So we want to, you know, we want to climb to the next mountain. So sometimes when I first introduce someone to the possibility that, you know, really that they can have it all, the idea is met with some internal resistance that goes something like, you know, well, having it all is not possible because it's not possible for me to own every pair of shoes that's ever made. Or I can't personally, you know, take every amazing vacation that there is to take or go on every possible adventure. I can't own every house or every car or every boat or have all the money that there is in the world. And of course, this is absolutely correct. 
at the moment, like the most simplistic and materialistic level, we can't have all the money in the world or own all the beautiful shoes that were ever created. In the, in, in the same way, we can't do everything that is possible to do all at once. We can't learn to be a pilot at the same time we're learning to ballroom dance or become a sushi set chef because we do have one limitation in life and that is time. But here's the thing. While it's true there are limitations as to how much we can have or experience at every given time or moment, and while it may not be possible for any one person to own all the material possessions in the world, the real question is, who would want to? I remember a couple of years ago, I was um, speaking at an event, and I told the audience that because there's no end to the universe that we are living in, there's no end to the possibilities that we can create for ourselves or our lives. And one of the participants thought about this, you could see he was really frustrated, and for a minute he raised his hand and said, you know, not everything is possible. So I asked him to tell me, you know, tell me something that you would really want to be that you think is impossible for you to create. And I think he was just waiting for the chance to just challenge my theory because he instantly fired back, you know, it's not possible for me to be president of the United States because I'm from a different country. And then I asked him, well, do you genuinely have a desire to be the president of the United States? And he immediately said, well, no. And then I asked him, well, what do you desire to be or have? And in the end, so, well, I do want to get involved in local politics and, you know, make a difference in that way. Now, was starting out in his local community and making a difference possible for him to create for himself? Absolutely. So having our it and our all is not about doing or having or being every possible thing out there that there is to do and have and be. It's about manifesting those experiences in our life that call our attention and that speak to our unique values and dreams and hopes and desires. It's as though each of us is looking at life through a kaleidoscope. And what we see when we envision the kind of life we want is to create a function of that particular combination of filters that we're viewing through it. So another important thing to distinguish is that the way we define our it and our all varies not only from person to person and from decade to decade, but also exists on very two different levels simultaneously. First, there's a materialistic dimension of how we want our lives to look on a purely physical level the condition of our bodies, our homes, our relationships, our finances, our careers, etc. And then second, there's the non-physical dimension of having it all, which is the internal feeling and experience we have about ourselves and our lives. Both dimensions are important, and as you learn, the inner experience of having it all is what allows us to attract and receive and enjoy the outer manifestations. Having it all in a material sense is simply a matter of identifying the aspects of life that we value the most and then deciding how we want those aspects to be. So for example, I have it all in the physical sense when my body is healthy and toned and I'm full of energy and at the proper size to fit into my clothes. I have it all when my husband Frederick and I are relating in a way that's intimate and vulnerable where we're bringing out the very best in one another, laughing a lot and enjoying the journey of being co-creators as spiritual companions, lovers, parents, business partners, and friends. I have it all when my communication with my kids is fun and flowing and when I'm patient and present and I have the experience of being deeply connected to them and to me. I have it all when I feel the really the complete support of all the amazing people who I work with, I call them my amazing dream team, you know, and an idea will be born within me and then the perfect person will come along who takes joy in helping me bring it to fruition. I have it all when I can be with my parents, free from any tinges of resentment or from wanting to change them and, and I'm able to simply enjoy them and find the, the time that I have left with them. I have it all when I'm attending the annual charity event for the hospital that saved my son Maxim's life and I'm in a position to give generously to such a worthwhile organization. So sometimes the experience of having it all bubbles up inside of me when I recognize the simple ways in which I am truly blessed. Like a couple of months ago when I was hanging out with what, in one of my favorite cities, Chicago, with my dearest friend, Dawn, having lunch with my boys at one of my favorite restaurants, Penny's Noodles, yum, and ordering a Cosmo to celebrate the occasion. You know, other times the feeling manifests in responses that 
to seem perfectly balanced. Like I managed to get a great workout in. I spend quality time with both my boys and with Frederick. And then I also contribute to my business in a way that leaves me inspired and fulfilled. And because my work is all about teaching abundance, for me, another important aspect of having it all is creating wealth in a material sense. You know, being free of debt, having enough money in the bank to be able to purchase what I want when I want it. You know, to invest a large amount of money each year to grow the wealth and to keep give freely to those that I love. In the area of my per, like my self-expressed self-expression and career, I have an all when I know that my creativity and my talents and my passion are being channeled productively and in a way that makes a difference in the lives of those who are drawn to my work, like you. So when these external conditions are present in my tangible physical experience, I experience a sense of personal fulfillment because these conditions remind me that I have the power to deliberately create my outer reality to align with any inner desire. And yet, this is a big yet. The external conditions themselves are not the source of my fulfillment. In fact, actually, the other way around. The fulfillment that comes from knowing that I am whole and complete and abundant is really draws those things, those external conditions in my life. It's a match and it mirrors back to me the inner feelings of fulfillment. So all tangible external, ma extern external manifestations are first created in the unseen internal dimension of our inner experience. Having it all simply means having access to all of yourself in every aspect of life that is important to you. The experience of having it all for me is knowing in every cell of my being that I already am everything that I seek. The very nature is abundance. My very nature is abundance and love and connection and joy. And when I am aligned and vibrating in alignment with this truth, I am full of myself in the good way, in the pure sense, not full of ego, but full of my original nature and allowing the highest expression of myself to come forth. I'm able to feel and embrace the whole range of my human emotions, one shifting into the other without avoidance or without resistance. I'm not attached to other people's opinions or trying to gain their approval anymore. My feet, you know, my feel good is not dependent on the way anyone else behaves because I know that I'm free to choose how I want to feel in any given moment. The inner experience of having it all is one of being fully connected to the life force that is the source of all manifested things to know and feel that we are an integral, integral part of that source and all that is. It's being here, present, awake, alive, not blocking or cutting off any aspect of ourselves, but allowing all aspects of who we are to be seen and to shine. This is the true joy in living because without this inner connection to ourselves, our outer accomplishments are shallow and fleeting. They entertain us momentarily, but they don't really nourish our souls. This explains why in the world of outer appearances, you know, we can have all the things that we think will make us happy and still feel empty, restless, unfulfilled, or discontent inside. So how do you define having it all? What does it look like in all aspects of your life. Please leave me a comment and I really want you to tell me how has this information really impacted you? I mean, let's continue the conversation. And as always, if you haven't already done so, please go to christywhitman.com and join the family. And if you like this video, please share it with your friends and family. And just remember, the universe is friendly and is always working for you. It's always supporting you in whatever you are asking for. You ask by your energy and vibration that you're sending out. And you can have your it and your all as you define it, as you want it. So start looking for your own having it all moments. And have a great week. I am the artist of my painting. I am the driver of my car. I am the director of my play. And baby, I'm the star. Are you ready to have it all? When you pre-order your copy of The Art of Having It All today, not only will you get instant access to the digital ebook version that you can read right now, but you'll also get access to over 102 other celebrity interviews where they share their secrets and how they created a life of having it all. 
click the link below to discover how you can start having it all right now.